Good morning, folks. You ready? Major news coming today. We've got all kinds of science to hit, including a continuation of the earthquakes, two storms of note, and of course, we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star and finding the southern coronal hole. Still turning through as the lone active region and sunspot trails them on the south. The active region is still not producing flares, just that lone umbral core inside the bright fields will continue monitoring for development of peripheral umbra today. Solar wind is still anemic, all telemetry in calm normal range, and that's another day of low KP index values. The big quake of yesterday struck China, luckily in the relatively uninhabited regions of the Tibet Autonomous Zone. We've got two storm systems of concern right now flanking the equatorial Americas. This is Hurricane Douglas. It's in the East Pacific, aimed right at Hawaii in the current forecasts. We also have a system developing in the Atlantic. This is Gonzalo spinning up into a hurricane and heading at the Caribbean. Let's kick off the science with aesthetics. This is the best shot of another stellar system ever taken, the star and two giant exoplanets. The system is found only about 300 light years away, a tiny skip across the local galactic neighborhood. And get this, both of these giant exoplanets orbit tremendously far away from their host star. That yellow circle inside is Pluto's equivalent orbit. Well, folks, to get an idea of how all over the place astronomy is, it was huge news that they nailed down more than two dozen synchrotron sources in space. But here, they are coming back and saying, no, no, none are actually synchrotron sources. They also question whether these sources were part of the cosmic web, but when you see how well the returns show the galaxies connected, one thinks they tried to stretch their debunking a bit further than was warranted. Up next, we're at active galactic nuclei, cosmic jets, and we're building on the recent work showing gamma ray production at the base and outflow of the jet. These interactions should be creating matter. When you hear the hypothesis suggesting that galaxies pour out stars, pour out matter, well, yes, just like the sun and solar wind. If given enough juice in their models, these linear space beasts are going to end up responsible for tons of the matter that exists in space. Up next, folks, this one is huge, and we're going to have to come back to it a number of times because new doors have now been unlocked. This paper suggests exactly what you think it suggests reading the title, The Sun Triggers Earthquakes. This has been our longest standing claim, back to 2011 actually, and while half of QuakeWatch.net is location forecasting, the other half is timing using the sun. You all saw that yesterday with the big Alaska quake and folks, and how they describe it as a piezoelectric process, coupling from ionosphere downward, and how the charge creates electrical effects in the ground, particularly discharge events at the fault line. Well folks, we just watched what happens when electricity finds a fault line in our plasma lab, and yes, this is the entirety of chapter 7 in our textbook, How to Predict Earthquakes, and the Role of the Sun. Speaking of the sun, Welcome back on the show, Dr. Loeb from Harvard. He and one other is suggesting that one of the ways to get to our current solar system setup is through the existence of an early companion. Basically, they are suggesting the sun had a binary early on and then lost it. They amazingly go on to do a boatload of math, but never come back and tell us what they think happened to the binary they thought was there. It didn't kill itself, I'll tell you that. Sticking with stars and the booms they make, we're looking at an excellent paper on recurrent nova, the stars that go boom over and over in short order. The list has now jumped from 11 such events to 26 just in our galaxy. Remember that they believe all classical nova, heck anything sub-supernova, death of a star, is likely to repeat, even on super long time scales. There are now more than double the number of stars known to do what we believe the sun does every 12,000 years or so. There's a very twisted paper out about the South Atlantic anomaly showing it existed about 8 to 11 million years ago, which they think means it is not a sign of imminent magnetic changes on Earth today. Well, not only did they breeze over the possibility that, heck, this is one of the recurring signs of that change, but as we look back at the paleomagnetism, here the wider black or white color bars indicate longer stability, with the thin lines close together, meaning lots of reversals, and during the time period in question, under my cursor, we see a ton of reversal activity, and folks, that doesn't even capture the excursion events between them. This paper combined incredible hands-on geology, with a complete dearth of reasoning skills. Last but not least, folks, they have found solid evidence that people occupied Mexico 30,000 years ago. 
15,000 years earlier than believed. Right now, there are some disagreements from experts crying about the huge gap in time without any evidence of occupation. And I might remind them that the Americas have not fared very well the last two catastrophe cycles, including being the primary target of the Micronova shell and impactors during the last one about 12,000 years ago. Lots of surge deposits here, and lots of reasons to expect this continent got a clean slate in the Gothenburg and Younger Dryas events. We greatly appreciate your support, folks, the sun, and earthquakes. I'll link that electric ground stimulation video below. Chapter 7 in our textbook has pretty much been vindicated into mainstream science now. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.